Oh no, Robert Aaron. You're surrounded by rebels. How unfortunate. So here is Harold Harding. He looks alright, except for the bowl cut. What's that about? He, oh no! That guy fell on his back on the walls. God, the Knights of the Vale are vicious. Look at that! Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome to my Game of Thrones Total War House Aaron campaign on the War of the Five Kings scenario. We're going to be starting off playing as Robert Aaron, but with a twist. The challenge of today's video is to get rid of Robert Aaron and install Harold Harding as the Lord of the Vale. Then what we'll do is declare Harold Aaron as the new King of the East, the Mountain and the Moon. We want to try and take King's Landing to avenge John Aaron as well. So if I can't in today's video do that, I'll consider this video challenge a failure. So let's march south. I hope you guys enjoy. So looking at our starting position, House Aaron's strengths lie in the strong mountainous position of the Vale. Kind of similar to Dawn as well, like the natural topography of our starting kingdom is quite strong. We've also got the impenetrable fortress of the Eyrie, or impregnable, if you ask Sir Bron of the Blackwater. Our major weakness is Robert Aaron, the Mad Regent, and some of the surrounding hill tribes. But we should be alright once we get rid of Sweet Robin. I don't overly dislike Robert Aaron that much, but in Medieval 2 and in this Game of Thrones mod, he's got some terrible traits. He's pretty much useless because of it. So, what we'll do is we'll get his cousin, Harold Harding, and once Robin's gone, he can call himself Robert uh, Harold Aaron. He's now 20, two-star command, pretty loyal. There's not really too much about him in the books that I kind of like, but I, d I don't mind the scenario of Robert Aaron disappearing and then <laughs> the Lords of the Vale rally around him and he can sort of go out and do his own thing. I don't think he would declare his in kingship in the East, but it wouldn't surprise me. There's still all that stuff with Sansa as well. So we've got Gold Town, which is a custom settlement. That looks quite cool on the coast there, but we need to rally up the Knights of the Vale. We've also got Peter Baelish here at our disposal, and John Royce as well. Uh, we've also got Templeton here as well, and Lionel Corbray, who has a Valyrian steel sword. No, it's Lynn Corbray has the Valyrian. Yeah, there we go. Lynn has Lady the Fall on, so we could gift that to Harold and make that the official ancestral sword of House Aaron slash Harding now. So here is the entirety of the Vale. So we're going to try and rally everyone up at the Bloody Gate and the Eyrie. The King of Dragonstone has been declared. So we're going to have to watch out for him. So we do want to try and get some vengeance on the Lannisters because they did kill my father from Robert Aaron's perspective, John dying, and I guess um... Yeah, so it's it's Harold's uncle, isn't it? I've also got Ulyssa Royce as well. I could marry her as Harold. That could be a potential option. So what we'll need to do is find a battle for Robert Aaron to to fight and get rid in. So no Royce there. Um, so there's yeah. So Harold's actually in there. We can't marry Ulyssa Royce to Harold. Why is that? Hmm. That's annoying. Oh well, we'll just have to marry him off eventually. If we can find a noble princess from one of the seven houses, that'd be cool, but we might just have to go with a random generator one. So we're rallying up the Knights of the Vale. Mark Strong is hanging out, hanging out in Strong Song. <laughs> I guess that's a reference. That's quite funny. Okay, I've skipped a fair bit ahead because it was actually easier for us to build a navy and sail south rather than march. So we're 22 turns into the campaign. Robin Aaron is still alive, but we've got the entirety of the Vale on ships here. We're going to surprise attack King's Landing, and they're not going to expect it. So we have four, nearly four full stacks in operation. Joffrey Baratheon is inside as well, which is perfect. And we should be able to take King's Landing. We can take Rosbury as well as a base of operations yes. if we want. So let's get Harold Harding in. Riker has actually rebelled, which is interesting. But that might be able to be useful for us. Because we might be able to get rid of Robert Aaron there. 
So, there's only two other forces. So, let's disembark you here. So, we're, we're sailing up the black water. Kind of like Stannis did. And we'll move that there. So, we'll get Robert Aaron out. Because we'll try and get rid of him in a battle as soon as we can. Uh, John Royce can push to Rosby as well. If we need to replenish some of our units. Okay. Alright, so, we're still sieging out King's Landing. John Royce is attacking Rosby. And we'll, we'll move Robert Aaron out in a moment. I'm going to push Corbray to the bridge. I'm going to end the turn because we could get attacked by the Lannisters. Nope, no reaction. That's good. Okay. New family member, Corbray. Okay. And we'll move Robert Aaron, I guess, to this Riker force. Hmm, that should be enough. Or should I hit that breath in? No, probably Riker here, because he seems to be a Kingsguard unit. Has he rebelled? Maybe. Need to hit that. Um, we'll be able to weaken Robert Aaron there as well. But we, what we need to do is actually need to manually play this. Yeah, there we go. So we're massively outnumbered. What is this, some small folk? A Kingsguard bodyguard. And some crossbows. That should be enough. So here it is. Poor little old Robert Aaron. Robert Aaron, sweet Robin, whatever you want to call him. He actually looks alright, like modelled. But with his 57 Knights of the Vale, madness has overcome him, and he's like, I want to march down and run down Riker. From Star Trek, I don't know. So what do we got here? We've got some gold cloak crossbows. And here are the small folk. And then, yeah, we've got Riker, who, I guess he was a Kingsguard unit that... Once he saw <laughs> the Aaron host disembarking on the Blackwater, he was like, you know what? Stuff that. <laughs> so we'll just, what we'll do, we, we'll, the main thing to get rid of generals like this, is you just need to get them stuck in. And what you want to do, yeah, there we go. So once you get, their, get them bogged down, oh, we might win this. You don't want them to attack. You just want them to move around. Because the main thing is, sometimes the general can run away. What have you done here, poor little Robin Aaron? You found yourself against a bunch of small folk with halberds. <laughs> Five remaining. Oh, there he goes. Perfect. The faction leader dies. Robin Aaron, the king of the east, is no more. And there goes his general's bodyguard. Taken down by Riker. And a clear defeat. So the Lord of the Eyrie is no more. Quite fitting that was a portrait of John Aaron. Now Harold Harding is now the undisputed heir. And now can be called Harold Aaron of the Vale. Cool beans. Right, so now with Harold Aaron being the undisputed leader of the Vale... We'll be able to march upon King's Landing. So John Royce can take Rosby here quite easily. So if we do lose spectacularly <laughs> the battle for King's Landing, we can flee back to a position. We'll try and run down some of these reinforcing outskirts units. We don't want to get Waxwell in. So Corbray's actually just chilling. He can actually hold that bridge just in case any Baratheons or Tyrells want to come up and oppose us. So we've got Harold Aaron versus Joffrey Baratheon, King Upon the Iron Throne. He's actually inside. The last couple of times I've played this siege is either Sandor and Tominin. It's not often Joffrey inside. So we'll fight this one. So we've brought a little bit of the gloomy, misty mountain veil weather with us. Oh, he can't see anything. Thick fog as well. By the look of it. So here is Harold Aaron or Harding. He actually doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Got a bit of a bold cut, but whatever. So here is Harold Aaron. The king in the east, the king of the mountain, and the moon, and the vale. And here is the rest of the House Aaron units. They definitely have some of the best looking models and units in all of Westeros. The white falcon flying defiant over a blue sky. Also got some Royce Greatswords here as well. 
Veil Swordsman. And yeah, there's Veil Swordsman on them. Roy Spearman as well. So we've got a nice little, little bit of unit diversity in this roster. So this should be a good one. Joffrey is trying to defend his Iron Throne. We have no claim to the Iron Throne through blood. Is there any Targaryens related to the Arons? I don't think so. I was, I was more so thinking, we'll just do it by right of conquest, take King's Landing, and declare myself king upon the Iron Throne. There was that story with one of the Targaryen sisters flying her dragon all the way to the top of the Eyrie. And that's why they bent the knee to the Targs. Oh, I fluffed that up there. I nearly had it all set up. I accidentally misclicked. Gonna have to reset that up again. Ugh. Got a lot of cavalry in this. But we, w we didn't intercept anyone on the way to King's Landing because we went by sea. We would have struggled to go through the Riverlands. So we hit them with a surprise attack and there's no one here. Because in my Baratheon campaign, no, the Martell campaign, we managed to stumble across at least Tyrion in the, in the Crown Force army. So we've got some good Aaron longbows here, so we'll move those boys up. But yeah, let me know in the comments. Does House Aaron have Targaryen blood in them? And they have a claim to the Iron Throne. I don't think so, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised. Seeing's that, obviously House Baratheon is quite known to having Targaryen blood. That was one of the... It's more so in the books, but that was one of the more justifications for Robert to be able to take the Iron Throne. They mention in the books as well that Quentin has Targaryen blood. Spoilers. He thinks he can talk and control the dragon and goes up to it and... Well, goes Kapoof. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Lannisters don't have Targaryen blood. I'm pretty sure the Tyrells as well don't. Same with like the Tullys and probably the Starks and the Greyjoys. I'm not too sure about the Arons. I wouldn't be surprised. Let me know. Got kind of kind of sores. So there's the Sept. We can barely see it. They've got catapults and trebuchets further at the back. But it's going to take us a little bit to make our way all to the Red Keep. Hope we don't lose our weight. But here he is. Joffrey Baratheon. King on the Iron Throne for now. He's got a Kingsguard bodyguard as well. Yikes. That can be a little bit tough to break down. We did defeat Tommen in this siege. But Tommen often doesn't usually have a Kingsguard unit. They crazily buff those units. Like, they only have a limited number of... Kingsguard in the bodyguard. But they have some crazy stats. They, there is some reinforcements coming in. I'll probably should get my cavalry to deal with that. But yeah, they do that for the White Walkers. The only other mod I've seen this sort of be similar in is the Elder Scrolls. Total War mod. Uh, yeah, Total War mod. With the blades. Those dudes are insane. Maybe I should go back to that mod. It's been a fair few years since I've sort of binged these Game of Thrones videos. Maybe we should do some Elder Scroll videos as well. I've sort of been craving Medieval 2 mods at the moment. Okay. So how Saren has made their way up to the walls, and we've also made a breach through the gates. So let's get the Knights of the Vale to try and win and capture the walls and flood into the streets of King's Landing. Fighting some gold cloaks on the walls. And our Royce Greatswords are doing a superbly well. Good job. Look at this. They are carving through them so crazy. Oh, no. That guy fell on his back on the walls. And then a huge greatsword fell upon him. Some crazy animations there. So there's still a fair few houses I haven't played as in this mod. I haven't really looked at House Targaryen in this mod. I think they were... Like, you want to play as Daenerys, you know what I mean? You don't want to play as... Very early House Targaryen in this. Hang on, there's about to be a good charge here, though. Oh, similar imagery to when the Knights of the Vale saved the Starks in Winterfell. But yeah, you play as Viserys, so you might have to get rid of him. Khal Drogo. But this is definitely one of the better 
Game of Thrones mods, and it's all available to the general public. I do recommend this. So we've lost seven percent to their twenty-seventh. Yeah, so it's the Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones enhanced mod. I'll put it in the description below as always. Oh my God, the Knights of the Vale are vicious. Look at that. Okay, so we're now on in. <laughs> So yeah, other houses I'm open to be doing. So we haven't played as the Boltons, House Frey. Maybe playing as one of the evil two houses might be cool. Uh, House Tyrell. Yeah, I guess to the Targs. Maybe House Tully. Let me know. And also, when you suggest campaigns, let me know sort of an objective or challenge I can try and compete complete. Okay, so we're still fighting on the walls. We've managed to breach through the castle, and now we're fighting some gold cloaks here. But the Falcon has well and truly entered King's Landing. They're doing really quite well, the Knights of the Vale. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll send one spear unit back because we need to break down the gateway in the red keep. Can't really see much of the, the squares there though. Okay, so yeah, we want to get to about here and then head up with the ram as well. That would be ideal and beneficial. So those Lannister Swordsmen are holding out more than the Gold Cloaks, which is understandable. They're probably more well-trained and battle-hardened by Tywin. But the Men of the Vale are in the streets of King's Landing. Where is Joffrey? Where is Joffrey Baratheon? Because really, House Aaron would want to get vengeance on the Lannisters. Mostly Jamie and Cersei for plotting against Jon Aaron. Also, what they think. Here's Joffrey, though. He's now marching against the Vale Swordsman and the King's Guard. Are going to give us uh, a massive run for our money. And he's even being supported by more swordsmen, so. Joffrey flying on into the thick of it with Oathkeeper as well. They have the high ground slightly. Lannister, Kingsguard against the Vale. All right. Let's push into them. We might need to try and flank. We might need to send Harold Harding in as well. About 70, 65% in our favour. Let's move those archers a little bit further up. Just get them a little bit closer. The enemy general is dead. Oh. I was going to say... If that was Joffrey, he did not last too long whatsoever. It was Captain Target. Yeah, we are struggling to break and make some decent progression through. We've nearly gone on finished the Battle on the Walls. We might need to move those Vale Cavalry in. Because small amounts of Lannister soldiers are trickling on into the Red Keep town square. Now, although they're bloodied, we are struggling to break through the King's Guard and those swordsmen. 51% we've managed to knock out, but we've lost 30% of our Aaron allies. There's Joffrey. Got to give it to him. At least he's sort of standing and fighting. 
absolutely covered in muck at the moment. What's even worse is they have a slight little high ground here. Oh, hang on. There's a charge coming in here from some gold cloaks. Quickly turn around, Knights of the Bay. Oh, nice little charge. That's cool. There's Knights of the Vale. Cavalry facing gold cloak cavalry as well in the streets of King's Landing. Okay, so it looks like we have completely won upon the walls. It's just pushing against these Kingsguard. Man, I told you. They are super hard to try and break down. Kingsguard units are very powerful in this mod. It's a shame only Joffrey's house can get them. You don't get them once you take King's Landing. You might be able to if you repair. I don't think so, though. But to be fair, house Joffrey Baratheon probably needs all the help it can get. Because it's surrounded by all sides, not really defendable, and hasn't got too crazy of an army roster. I never thought about that. Maybe I should play as Joffrey. The Mad King. That might be interesting. Yeah, still 32 left. I'm going to have to flank with my cavalry around. It just takes so long to navigate. The narrow corridors and streets of King's Landing. We have to go all around Flea Bottom before we can surround Joffrey. Here we go. So we're going to be able to hit him with some Aaron Cavalry from behind. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Bring them down. Soften up their footing. So 32 of them left. They are really making us work for this one. 51%? Crikey. That just shows you when there's a Kingsguard unit in there. Because I think... I, I don't think this Aran army is like that much weakened compared to other... Oh, wow. Uh, Westeros armies. Like, it's not that bad. Also, it's getting worse when, like, catapults are about to start flying into this cluster. Or trebuchet shots. Yeah, 29 now. So it's been, like, a good, like, minute there, and we've only lost a couple. We might have to uh, cycle charge, maybe. We might even have to send a unit after that trebuchet. Luckily, it's because we're a little bit hidden under the low ground there. It's firing mostly over the top of my soldiers. Because that could have been very, very bad. Probably... Oh! We have to stop this. Yeah, we'll send a cavalry unit up there. <laughs> That's getting way, way, way too close. Yeah, so it's just Joffrey's Kingsguard unit that are still holding on. Oh, uh, unit routes. I guess that was the Lannister Sword unit. Oh! He just put one... He put a brave... Swordsman of the Vale down there. King's Landing now burns. Basically because of Joffrey and his trebuchets and catapults. I guess you could roleplay that as wildfire ripping through part of the city that's gone off. Look at that, man. It's starting to be engulfed in flames, King's Landing. Alright, we do need to retach to that ram eventually. And get it over up to the Red Keep. We just can't see anything in this siege. Sometimes it can be quite dark and gloomy, the siege for King's Landing. It's pouring down with rain. Right, let's move a Royce unit up there if we can. There mustn't be many more left in. Yeah, it's just Joffrey, probably. Oh, hang on. There's a catapult unit there. Hey, he's gone. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we finally got him. King Joffrey of the Iron Throne is no more. And now we can move up our Veil Swordsman on the battering ram. 
Alright, move those up there. Yeah, so there's still a small little bit. But Harold Harding, maybe because he didn't have the command, has let a lot of Aaron soldiers die in this one. Ugh, a little bit of a high casualty fest, this one. But it looks like we're going to be, a be able to claim victory from a pretty decent surprise attack. Yeah, I recommend, if you are playing as House Aaron in the Vale, if you want to hit King's Landing, don't bother going through the Riverlands and fighting your way through Harren Hall and the Tullys if you need to, or those Crown Lay units. Just go sail up the Blackwater. But it did take us a while to get there. It took us nearly, I don't know, 20 to 25 turns. So, maybe Stannis, the Tyrells, or Renly had a crack at King's Landing. But even if, I don't know, even if Harold lose the entire army, it doesn't matter too much because we do have, of course, our two additional armies. We call it. But Harold, Harold Harding, the young falcon, the king of the east, has made his way into King's Landing with the might of the Vale. And will be able to claim himself king upon the Iron Throne. I guess the Starks would be kind of happy. They're not blood related to Harold, are they? No. No, not at all, actually. Because they're not actually related to the Arons, the Starks. They're related to the House Tully, Lysa Tully, aren't they? So they might be, well, they probably wouldn't be happy that we got rid of Robin, so maybe the Starks wouldn't like us. Maybe the Greyjoys would be quite impressed. <laughs> like, yes, they took it by conquest. Clear victory as well. Okay, so King's Landing has fallen to Harold Arryn of the Vale. The leader of House Joffrey is no more, and we can sack King's Landing as well. Perfect. So it's now fully... Under Aaron occupation. I kind of like this campaign because you can do something completely different. Just go on your own path. Declare yourself as King of the East. And now we've taken King's Landing. Perfect. We'll put up the taxes as well. But Harold Aaron has taken King's Landing and the Iron Throne by right of conquest. Okay, well, unfortunately we've got to end today's video here. Thank you very much for watching. We've gone out and completed today's objective of taking King's Landing. We got rid of Robert Aaron as well. Sweet Robin is now no more. And now with King's Landing fallen, we are king on the Iron Throne. We can look to maybe take those Crown Land remaining settlements. But I think I want to move on to another campaign in video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more on this Game of Thrones mod. Maybe other Medieval 2 mods and just sort of general Total War videos. Alright boys, I've got to play the outro now and say thank you to this month's channel members and patron contributors. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you'd like to stay connected with me. Let me know feedback and suggestions for the video. Gotta say a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tal, Liam B, Kyle P, Tom C, and Wyatt P. So thanks guys, my name has been Simsy, much love from Australia, goodbye.